But you want to hear funny stories, don't you? Um, okay, here's three from the one night the, the psychos and the meanies both supported Pearl Jam in Canberra. Um, <clears throat> Eddie likes a drink. We know the psychos like a drink. So the first thing, uh, you know, after the show that uh, Ross did was introduce the broomstick game, where um, you had to get a broom handle, hold it up with the broom bit in the sky, and twist 10 times, turn around 10 times, then drop the broom and jump over it and actually not fall over. So that was hours of fun, because everyone was very, 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 very drunk. G'day! Um, later that night, we all went back to the Hilton in uh, Canberra where, the, where uh, Pearl Jam was staying, and um, Ross and Bill decided to introduce the, uh, or maybe it was Robbie, anyway, one of them, <clears throat> decided to introduce the um, 50 cent game to the whole bar. Um, Vetter, you know, main, mainly was the main protagonist, where you, you know, preferably keep your pants on, but you wedge a 50 cent piece in your ass cheeks, and then waddle up to a glass that's been strategically positioned on the floor, um, turn around, jump the glass if you can, if not, just turn around, unclench the buttocks and drop the 50 cent piece into the glass. I hand you this and you can tell me what, what memories that brings back to you. Oh, this? Look at that. It's just like this. It's almost the same one I got in my pocket. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> what is it like? You know what that is? Well, that's the, that's the game ball right there. Don't mix them up, because this is my game ball. This is the game ball. Yeah, there's not much to it. It's a simple game. So you just kind of take a breath, you know, focus. And then you, you um, kind of indulge yourself get a good grip on it it's pretty important and then there's a walk that you got to do and uh, the walk has to be done it can't be dropped during the walk casual casual you see gonna set up oh you <laughs> did it <laughs> <laughs> but you made it. <laughs> Lexi, believe it. <laughs> Wait, I've never seen it. You break it and it goes in? <laughs> I told you, man, I might break your glass. <laughs> Ain't got that right. But working on my glutes lately. Damn, now I'm down to two. <laughs> we go upstairs to Eddie's room because the bar shut. So he orders an entire slab of Crown Lagers that had to be all opened and wheeled in on a, uh, on a um, trolley. But <laughs> Ross suggested that we be nude drinking at the time so that the boy wheeling in the beers gets a little bit of a shock of his life. So there's eight blokes, grown men, just standing around with their pants down around their ankles with a beer, having a chat. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> concierge fella got a little bit of a shock when he walked in. But then he he comes up and we're kind of in the middle of a round, and he, he he I think he wanted to ask the question like what's going on, but but we but he did wanted to be polite and we told him maybe because we felt guilty. Look, you should know we're nothing weird. You know, a bunch of guys hanging around. <laughs> hanging around. <laughs> Anyways, but we I, I told him and that not to be. I didn't mean to be. You know erudite or throwing money around but I but I thought it would be great if he gave it a shot and, and I told him I'll, I'll, I'll you know I'll I'll pay the bill and then and then double the I'll pay the if you can drop this coin into that glass <laughs> it was a pretty tense moment because there was a lot of money this ain't buying a beer this ain't like buying a six-pack this is buying a you know like 50 beers like room service prices, right? <laughs> so it was a pretty big take, you know, there's a big haul to be had here. <laughs> so the room got kind of tense, and I think we all wanted him to make it, even me. <laughs> and he went up, he went up, and he was kind of tall and lanky, which doesn't really serve you well in this game, right? <laughs> and he's got his, you know, nice pressed pants and all that, but he dropped it and went in. <laughs> it was an eruption, you know. He still had his pants on? <laughs> At about seven in the morning, we decided to go down for a swim in the hotel pool. 
it was shut, but we thought, let's go and play some tennis. So, um, <laughs> we could see from our room as the, as the sun started to illuminate the earth, that there was a tennis court that seemed to be connected to the hotel, so. So we went out into the tennis court, and we go, what are we gonna use? And Ross goes, we'll use our boots. Somehow Wally, Link, and Ross and I, we ended up on this tennis court playing a game of boot tennis. Well, you had to kick the boot over the net. Boot tennis, you know. <laughs> Absolutely fucking ridiculous. It became like a critical match, you know. It was like some. We started diving, you know. We do. We got these big long scrapes and the whole thing. And then Ross ended up somehow naked. I think just to throw off our focus, because I think we were we were like winning at that point, and it worked. It was like really great strategy. So it's one night. That was just in one night. <laughs> And that's all true story. You know, we're in a band. You don't have to grow up when you're in a band and you're on tour. It's just, you, you just, you can behave like you're an imbecile, it, 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 particularly if you are one. I remember one US tour, Lindsay Gravina, our um, favourite producer in the world, decided to come along to the States to be our, our sound guy. Now, I don't do live sound. I never had before that and never have since, really. It's just, it's not my thing. But, uh, but as an opportunity to hang out with the psychos in America, I had to do it. The very first gig we played, we hooked up with the Lazy Cowgirls in Texas. And uh, not only did I borrow the Lazy Cowgirls amplifier, promising that nothing would happen to it, and it went up in flames about 30 seconds into the first song, we had Lindsay on sound, and the, it was at Emo's, and the place is packed. Probably five, 600 people there. We're swearing at Lindsay, saying, Lindsay, how about some fucking fallback? Lindsay, how about this? And of course, you know, as, as in jest, we're not really getting stuck in him. Oh, feeding back, he couldn't hear anything. It was just a schmozzle. And his way of keeping the crowd entertained whilst, you know, trying to work out what we're going to do about this um, burnt out amplifier was to send me up, of course, you know. So. That's when he first started calling me the Cuban. Because um, apparently they don't like Cubans very much in Texas. So, uh, so he, he, he yelled out from the stage, Lindsay, you fucking stupid Cuban! We're paying you ten bucks a day! Why don't you get up here and fix this fucking amplifier? Come! And, uh, and I... Well, all I could do in, in response to that was yell out, fix it yourself, you fat cunt. And as soon as I said that, I started noticing that, that everyone had almost sort of like backed away towards the walls as though they were reaching for their guns. That was nearly all over before it started. People in the audience are either laughing or they're threatening to beat Lindsay up. And in the end, it got so fucking bad that Bill jumped up and got security to drag him off the desk, put the house guy in there. And in the meantime, we had some Sheila who jumped up on stage and stripped the clothes off and was go-go dancing. And there was... So we had Lindsay Gravina battle with him. We had a Sheila on stage with no clothes on. She was off her tits, rolling around on the floor. And Bill standing up screaming at Lindsay, security trying to drag him off the desk there. It was a really good gig, that one. <laughs> We kept that going for the whole tour. That, that was set then, because Lindsay wanted to persist with this sound thing. So every gig, we just finish off just screaming at him. But basically, and just we couldn't give a fuck. That didn't matter too much. 